hello from sunny Denmark, where we are in the middle of the first ever World Championships in knockout sprints. We are live from the city today to bring you not just the semi-finals and the finals, but the quarter-finals too. So welcome if you've uh, joined us to watch and cheer on the athletes who are supporting for the quarter-finals, the semi-finals, and hopefully they'll make it all the way to the final today. Uh, the quarterfinals are coming up in a matter of minutes. They will be coming thick and fast, starting every six minutes. And of course, it is the top three of six runners to qualify through from the quarterfinal to the semi-final. And then it's even harder to make it into the final. Only the top two from each semi-final will make it through to that final. So we've got a lovely long afternoon and into the evening of orienteering here today. Some absolutely world-class orienteering. And we are so excited to be able to show you all of these finals here from this knockout sprint. It's such an intense form of orienteering. It's so tactical and these athletes really have to be on their A games today. It's going to be an incredible scene. We've got quite a lot of competitors. We've uh, got a lot of spectators here uh, in the arena to cheer them on. You can see uh, the Kibbutz fan club there going to be ringing their uh, Swiss cowbells to cheer on uh, the Swiss athletes. Um, we can look at the uh, quarterfinal then statistics. It is actually the same map for the men and the women for this quarter final is only going to be a very short winning time and Jonas why don't you talk us through the course mm -hmm. it's actually the only course today not starting in the arena so we are a little bit outside and directly from the from the start there's a possibility for a left or right route choice to the first control uh, then we have a long route choice from the second control to the third control and here you have different options um, the shortest one is going out to the south and then all the way around this fountain in the middle and going back towards north and closer to the red line. 3-4, uh, kind of a transportation leg and 4-5, another route choice where you can go back to 3 or all around. 6-7, then if you are behind the last chance to get in contact again, there are quite many route, possible route choices on this leg, uh, the fastest one or the shortest one at least is going out to the east directly after the control. But we, I'm sure we'll see more of that, of, uh, of this later on. So to get through to this quarterfinal then, you had to be in the top 12 of the three heats, uh, and then you had to pick your quarterfinal. I'm sure we're gonna come into that in some more detail, but those who finished near the top of the uh, results from the, this qualification were able to be the first ones to pick their heats, and then the, to those towards the end will be the last ones. Watch out for heat for quarterfinal number five. We've, we've identified that one as the toughest, that's according to the, the quarterfinal, uh, sorry, the qualification results. Uh, the women's are a bit more evenly spread. I remember the first six women who pick all picked different heats. It's very interesting. We're going to get probably into some of the uh, maybe the tactics of how you choose your quarterfinal, who do you want to be running against, and maybe even more crucially, do you want to be running early on in the uh, you know, you want to be in an early quarterfinal so you get an early semi-final and then you have a longer time to recover before the final. That's assuming they make it all the way, of course. So we will start then uh, with men's quarterfinal one, uh, featuring probably the favourite for this race. He, he's there in the red. It is, of course, Matthias Kibert, five times world champion. He is the European champion in the knockout sprint that was uh, over in Neuchâtel in Switzerland. So... They are already these six men, Matthias Kibbutz, Joe Lynch, Adrian Delen, Thomas Krivda, Alguidas Bodkovicius and Bojan Blumenstein. And all six of them off together. You can see Matthias Kibbutz is already towards the back of this one. And they've all, you can see Joe Lynch, I think, looking around to his left to see what the, the Swiss man is doing. I think he is the big favourite for this. Of course, three make it through um, of these six. Uh, it's going to be tight. Mm -hmm. And one thing to say that we haven't mentioned so far, there's no forking on this quarterfinal. So all of the runners have exactly the same course. And of course, they know about it. They didn't have the runner's choice. And they also see, when they look at the map, there's no kind of uh, splitting option on the course. Yeah, so they all just run the same way. They will know this. And it's really kind of about the balance of 
how much you read your own map, how much you follow, you know, who is in what position in this pack. And um, it's incredibly tactical. Mm, and now they're on the way to the second control. And then we will have the first longer route choice, the one to the third controls. There are quite many options on this one. Uh, Interesting to see if they will wait for Kibbutz to decide to race. <laughs> oh, I think Algirdas Bartkovicius was in there. He kind of stopped a little bit, though. I think it um, looks like it was Joe Lynch who made, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who really started on that one. And you could really feel that no one mm -hmm. wants to lose Kibbutz back. I mean, if if you're going on a route and Kibbutz and two or three other runners are taking the same route, there's a risk that you would lose the pack. So for me, that's not a big surprise that they are staying together. It's still early into the course and they chose the one to the north here. Actually, it would have been um, less distance to go if you had exited control southwards and then rounded this fountain in the middle and then going back to the red line, as I said. But it's not a very big difference. And I mean, here in this case, it doesn't matter at all. They're all together now. They will stay together until the third control. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't really make much of a difference when everybody goes the same way. I think. You know, it, the the thing that differs here is that if they would have split up, they could not have had this uh, kind of tactical running when they could save some energy. I don't think they will run full speed here, all of them. You have seen that on the first two control. But I mean, if if we would have seen two or three runners going the other way, of course, all of them would have been forced to go full speed on this route choice. Now, this is a very interesting route choice. I don't think this is one we, this isn't one we tested out, yeah, I don't but think. It, it's actually one of the route choices highlighted by the course planners as one of the best ones. And uh, as I said, I mean, it doesn't really matter uh, as long as they're together. There would have been the possibility to kind of cut the corner there um, and not go all the way around, but in the end, well, obviously this heat here won't be decided on the third leg. <laughs> no, and I don't think many of them will be decided on the third leg at all. Let's see who's uh, taking control of this then. It looks like it's Thomas Krivda of the Czech Republic, then uh, Matthias Kubert's in second, and mm -hmm. Bojan Blumenstein for me just dropping off the back there. Um, he actually didn't run the sprint relay. He, he didn't make the team. He was not feeling very well, so he didn't uh, do that. Joe Lynch, have to say, it's his first World Championships. And then the other three all ran the second leg of the sprint relay where we saw a big mistake. And so here it will be interesting to see. There is an option to back out from the control again. Uh, you see Kibbutz, all of them are going back again. There would be another option to continue and go all around. But uh, that is act, that is the, short, the, the shortest option distance-wise. Yes, yeah, so you could have continued down... Uh, like southwest out of four to go around that area that's blocked off, but they will go down and back underneath the um, underneath the ramparts. Mm, and interesting to see now from control six to seven, will any one of the runners dare to do something slightly different to the group? And or this, will they stick together? They will, uh, talking to some of the athletes, they, they tend to have a little look at, at the course as a whole and think about where it's going to be won or lost, basically. Where, where you have to take a risk if you feel like you need to, where you want to stick with the pack if you need to. They're going to identify those sections. And for me, that is control number seven today. Mm -hmm. See now. Ah, so Kibbutz. So they are splitting up. And if there's anyone who will take a different route, it's Matthias Kibbutz. We've mm -hmm. seen him do it before. And, and uh, so Delen, Lynch and Kibbutz go the same way. Blumenstein, Bartkovicius and Krivda go the other yeah, way. Yeah, and distance-wise, that's the shortest option. Uh, Kibbutz, Delen and Lynch were taking. So, But of course, I mean, you have a few steps to take there. Um, the shortest option is not always the fastest one. So let's see if they get together again at this point. Seemed to be quite equal and now they all group back up again together mm -hmm. round this corner it's a very 
grid-like city here, but they've done a really good job in putting these barriers here. And there's kind of lots of these central courtyard areas. They work really hard to, to make that. Let's see who's in the lead. Now it's really a sprint out. You can see they've really upped the pace here. We have got Kibbutz, we've got Delen, we've got Krivda, we've got Lynch, then uh, Bakovicius, and it looks like the German is off the back. So here it is, top three to make it three to the semi-finals. It's looking good for uh, Kibbutz, as we might expect. Delen then in second, and Joe Lynch really trying to race it in for the third place, but he is not going to make it through. So we have Matthias Kibbert in the lead, taking, making it through to the semi-final. We have uh, Adrian Delen and we have Thomas Krivda. So Switzerland, France and the Czech Republic all making it through to semi-final one. Mm, tactically very clever played uh, by Kibbutz. Uh, he stayed quite passive in the beginning and then he turned, yeah, he speeded up in the end of the course. It was very, yeah, you could see it very clearly in the picture that towards this second last control and last control, he really gave it all. Okay, it's quarter final two then. They are actually going off every uh, six minutes. So we will catch the start of this and then jump through to, to where it becomes live. This is, you can see the lineup, Chris Jones, bronze in the European sprint in the Chappelle. Didn't run the last month much in Barros. Uh, he also Colin Kohlberg, Jaywalk Sprint Champion uh, in 2018. It's his second World Championships. Peter Perifinovic, sorry, in Poland. Robert Mel from Austria. Johnny Crickmore from Great Britain. And Aaron Bako from Hungary. Mm, and of course, the big favourite in this heat is Chris Jones. Had a good run in the sprint relay. Also had a good qualification this morning. Uh, another runner with a good qualification was Colin Kolbe. And at fourth there so in his heat so that was quite a good run uh, but I expect it to be a tighter heat here and now we are live again with them uh, so in there would be a chance I guess that they split up earlier here maybe someone feels that he can decide this heat earlier yeah, and for me, yeah, Chris Jones here is is the big favourite, and I think from from the others, it could be quite tight. I think between the others to make it through, I think uh, a lot of people will fancy their chances in this mm -hmm. one. And now we see that they are splitting up. Robert Mel continues on the same way as we have seen Heat One before. All the others, I guess, turn to the left there. And now the question is, is it faster to go down there? Because they have to turn up again towards control three. They are not allowed to cut the corner there. And Mel, of course, has a bit an easier entrance there. Doesn't have to go around just before the control. Yeah, it's quite a sharp turn around that end of that hedge before the building to go towards control number three. And we will pick them up then at the cameras by the fortress. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Here's Colin Colber really stretching it out. Aaron Bacco in uh, second place. And there, that's the sharp corner that they have to come round. And we'll see where the Austrian is, where Robert Merle is. Mm -hmm. But it's quite spread Chris out here. Chris Jones continued there. I don't know if that was a good decision. He's going all the way around. I mean, it's an option, but let's see if he will lose time on that. Should come from the other direction then. Oh. There he is, yes, indeed. Clashing with his teammate. But now they're doing a mistake now here, yes. They are doing a mistake, and it's the two Brits to realize first, I think. They realize it's at the top. Goodness me, this is a KO sprint. Yeah, you could see that and they were not changes. they were not really well prepared when they approached control. It's, I mean, it's when you see it when you come there. It's uh, you could, <laughs> I mean, it's it's quite obvious that they want to play with these different levels. Mm. Um, so you should be very careful when you come here. You should be very aware of that there is a possibility. And now we see that they're splitting up again. Yeah, so some of them go back past uh, control number three. One went the other way. So 
So uh, little route choice, as we said, down to five. A very easy control to number six. And then we get the one last route choice to seven. Although, do they think they've maybe this group of three have dropped the others? There they go in uh, behind there. There is uh, the German and the Pole. And Robert Merle has gone the other way. Is it going to be good for the Austrian? Of course, you've got to get to five then, number six. I don't think we've got a camera at this spot. So we will. next time we see them, I think, is as they head into the car park towards control number seven. And again, let's see if they go different routes. No, I think this is Merle losing some oh, yeah. time, I think, uh, on that route choice. He has to go back round to five and then to six again. So that group of three have got a gap then on the rest of the field. And now you can see that Kolbe... He has to take a risk yeah, here, you course. know, he's behind. He, you know, he was, he was leading the race. He has to but the question back is, himself. If he just forgot to punch control five before six and now had to go back, mm. that's my feeling there because he's not going another, no. on another route. But it looks quite okay here for this group of three you mentioned before. They were doing the more active orienteering. They realized that mistake first, and that, that is what knockout sprint orienteering is sometimes. So it looks like Crickmore is taking the lead, I think. Okay, let's see them. This is control number seven then in the left of picture. And who comes round this one first? It's Johnny Crickmore from Great Britain looking fantastic. Next up, Chris Jones. Next up, Aaron Bako from Hungary. And these three have got a gap then over the rest of the field. Uh, we haven't seen anybody else yet through this control. And the uh, Hungarian is looking behind him as the uh, others are on the chase here. They want to see if they can get ahead. But it is Johnny Crickmore then into the finish. He, look at the delight on his face then from Johnny Crickmore. He made it through to the quarterfinals in Baroque. Didn't make the semi-final. He will be absolutely chuffed to do that. Chris Jones as well. GB one and two through. And Aaron Bakker as well. So what a dramatic mm. quarterfinal. You could see that uh, Colin Kolbe, he gave it all in the beginning. He had quite a big lead and the small gap there already at control three, but then he missed uh, control four totally. He was not really well prepared. He kind of got the feeling that he should have used that time. He, I mean, he had a gap there already to prepare control four and be very sure where the control is. But maybe this is, if, you, if you're running off the front, you're in the red a bit more, you're just not that as prepared for that orienteering, maybe it's better to stay with the group, I don't know. It's uh, certainly interesting. Well, we move very, very quickly on to quarterfinal number three. Uh, we have a, a good mix of runners in here, and actually maybe this is one of the more even ones uh, to talk about. Uh, how about Sunset Ismo? It's his uh, second world championships. He was 12th in the sprint last time. Uh, and good at the knockouts in the Europeans, uh, champs in Neuchâtel, really strong. Uh, Ricardo Rankin also seventh in the sprint last, last year in the World Championships, really strong for him. Mm, and fourth at the European champs. And interesting here, we have a very fast runner with Jonathan Gustafsson running 3,000 meters in 8.07. Oh. So that's quite a good pace. And of course, he wants to play out that card. He wants to play the physical card here. And... Uh, He's taking the lead here already in the beginning. He's not interested in some slow <laughs> running here. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He is hitting the front. It is his first World Championships as well. Uh, so he's got a, you know, just to make it onto the team for, for pretty much any of these runners from Sweden is uh, impressive. And he has taken control then here. Well, right, this first route choice, they all mm, stop. And now you can see they're... Ah, uh, they all stop. And it looks like it was Mika Kirmala from Finland who had uh, who had that on there. We see what route they've gone, and actually they've split up. Eidsmo gone the different way. Mm -hmm. And it's actually something we were discussing yesterday. If it's um, the forking, if it's good or not, when it's such a technical, it's a demanding sprint here. There are many decisions to mm -hmm. take, and um, the, the risk when you don't have a forking here is that they don't dare, the runners, they don't dare to split up because why should you risk something on the way to the and third this, control And this already. one where there's no standout runner as well, you know, that's where you will want to, I think, you know, 
just stay behind everybody else. It reminded me, this is maybe a little bit mean, but it reminded me of a, a, a junior relay, you know, when you're like 10 and 12 and all the kids run out to the start trying to stop. Interesting here, there's a gap uh, to Ricardo Rankan. He lost the contact here, now he has to fight back into the group. It's not really the position you want to be in. You, want, you don't want to use too much energy here in the beginning. Oh, and they've stopped here a couple of stops, but Jonathan Gustafsson knew which way he was going to go. Ah, uh, did oh, he did really? He? No, he didn't. <laughs> and uh, Hubbard Eismo does know which way he's going to go. I don't think it's the quickest way. I wonder who was the other person who went the other way. Uh, we will see uh, how we do, how it was we only do one, now. It was only... Um, it was Kenny Kivakas went the other way. Yeah. Kenny Kivakas from Estonia, good all-rounder all-round orienteer and has made that uh, different route choice then yeah, and, and we'll see what happens. Good for Ricardo Rankan that there was some hesitation now he got the chance again to get back into the group and we see that Kivik has his losing time here towards control five. It's not the fastest option there. And then he will be, all that he sees is everybody coming the other way. Five men, five incredibly quick men coming the other way. And, um, and let's see whether they split up now. No, they are all going this same way. Mm -hmm. Maybe Now we, mm -hmm. they're splitting up. Gustafsson is going a bit more to the south here. All the others are choosing to go around. I think that's that is a very good. good route by Gustafsson yeah. and Kier Mula. Yeah, completely. They have, met, they have, for me, they have got through on that route choice because if we look when they come out here, they should be well ahead as mm, they go course. around this building here. If you go out there, you have to leave the control directly to direction of east to go there. Otherwise, you go kind of back and forth all the way. Now they're splitting up again. Let's see who's coming first okay. here. <laughs> Who is going to make it through to this control seven first? This is everyone going ever on this last one. Yeah, Gustafsson, Gustafsson. he was very soon decisive. Kirmula. Gustafsson, Kirmula. We might not be able to see the others if they're coming from the other direction, though. Here is Rankin in the picture. Here is Ricardo Rankin from Switzerland. And, and there is uh, Aitmo from Norway, and they are the top three, Gustafsson, Kiermaier, and Eismo, as we follow them into the finish here on this quarterfinal, the third quarterfinal. It is Gustafsson who's able to jog it through to the line. Mika Kiermaier in second place, and Harvard Sansad Eismo is in third, punching the air. Ricardo Rankin run out of it, uh, so too. Mikhail Olejnik and uh, bringing up the rear. Kenny Kivikas, who was uh, in, in control in the middle part mm. of the race. You have to be consistent throughout the whole race. And you could see in this heat, really, the route choice 6 to 7 was decisive. Uh, Gustafsson had a good route choice compared to the others. And uh, together with Kirmula, could kind of decide to race there. OK, we've had half of the men's quarterfinals. We'll move on to quarterfinal four. Again, one that's potentially quite open, I reckon. Um, we have got uh, Martin Hoogman, Lower Kappen, Soen Trana Erden, Wojtek Kral, Jonas Bonek, and Wojtek Sleipa. For me, Wojtek Kral is probably the most interesting person here. He was pretty much the king of the knockout sprint uh, when it first uh, started on the World Cup in the most last few years. But with some questions, I think, about his form, yeah. nevertheless, he's gone straight to the front. I mean, uh, when we were talking, for him, it wasn't really a good thing that this World Championships was moved by two years, I yeah. guess, because, as he said, 2019, the last knockout sprint before the break, he was definitely the big, big favourite. He won almost all of the competitions back then in knockout sprint, and he's taking the lead here directly from the start. Yeah, he looked really strong here, just being very decisive on all the others uh, off the back. Martin Hubman just uh, doing a lot of map reading at the back. I think he's ready, going to be ready to pounce if anybody makes a mistake, if anybody hesitates. For me, he's going to be the, the one of the most uh, confident ones going on to this route choice, the next control, but we will see. 
all of them looking really carefully at their maps uh, as they figure this one out. And it is the Dane who is the quickest off the mark, I mm -hmm. think. Also some waiting here. Okay. All of them leaving the control to the same direction. All of them together here. We have seen quite many different options, but we haven't seen the the one that uh, is the shortest distance to run so far. No, that's one going south and around the water, we think. I think it look, it's hard to spot, and I, I think it doesn't look that, uh, that, that short and that quick. But they go the other way around the hedge this time, and it is Le Capen, the Frenchman, in the lead here. It's his third world champs. He's really upped his game this time. Didn't qualify for the sprint final last time. You could also see that Martin Hoopman tried to uh, get a better position in the group. It's, it was kind of a risk that there was a gap opening. But now there was some hesitating again and everyone is together more or less. I don't think Hoopman has been, been in a better position than his sixth position <laughs> <laughs> throughout no. the course so far. But for me, that means he's got a tactic. Yeah, and let's see now. All of them are going to this a little bit slower route. They will drop steeply down the hill. And this group, oh, they have not split up at all. No. Any of them. I think this is, is this the first one we've not seen any of them split up? Maybe. Okay. But I think they've the best ones will maybe have identified that six to seven is the key. Mm -hmm. Six to seven, if you want to take a risk, you take it there. It's not, not any point taking a risk. Uh, or or you don't take a risk at all, and yeah. then you just you uh, trust in your physical yeah. ability. And I think a lot of these guys, you know, with three with three to go through, Wojtek Karl, for me, is, is a favorite here, but otherwise, actually, they're quite level. It's quite a level playing field. So they might, you know, you, that's going to give you a lot of confidence that you've got a better kick than the other guy. We will find out who actually does uh, very, very soon. So let's see now if they split up. It seems as if Udum is going to the east. Hoopman is going to the south. He's the only one there. Uh, we saw that before that it was not the worst option, but then we had uh, the other runners leaving the control in another way. They were leaving in the Hoopman option. So let's see there. Is he doing his... No, I think they're all back together again. They'll yeah. go through this, um, through the tunnel here and through the car park. And this is uh, maybe not here. This map is where we've got some of those uh, like window ones. It looks like you're going through somebody's house, basically, on some of these alleyways. The organizers have done a really good job to kind of negotiate a lot of the gates to be opened um, because it really makes the map a lot more interesting. And now it will be very interesting to see who is coming around the cor corner first here. Okay, this is one. They've stayed so close together on this uh, quarterfinal. And we wait to find out who comes around the corner first. Oh, it's, it's Udum. Uh, Hoodman's there too, but some of them are not very distinct on where the actual control is. And Loic this Capen. is crazy. Look at them, it's very close to you. Oh. Fight out here, and this troll going to be run out of it. This is the closest quarter final yet. Loic Capen looking fantastic in the lead. Martin Hoodman's there. I think Wojtek Kral has just overtaken the Dane. He has. And the Dane's also been taken. He goes down into fifth and being taken, overtaken by Yanis Bonek as well. So, Catburn, Hubman, Kral are the ones to make it through. Wojciech Kral with a really strong sprint finish there because I didn't think that was necessarily going to happen. And uh, those are the ones. That was the tightest it, one yet. But goodness me, all that faffing around at the, at the seventh Yeah, control. I mean, you got the feeling that all of them, they just trusted in their ability to take it home from the last control to the finish and then it was kind of a dead situation and <sighs> was really decided on the last meters. Okay, for me, this is the most interesting quarterfinal here. Uh, this is 
I think, by far the most difficult one to get through. These guys are matched incredibly well. There's some really top runners in this uh, heat, and this is going to be incredibly exciting to see. Oi. Oh, except someone misses their map. Rohola. And uh, as you mentioned before, I mean, we have Martin Drekborn. He, he was second in the qualification with Aston Key, won the qualification. Jakob Etzen also won the qualification. Tim Robertson almost missed the qualification, <laughs> yes, made it by one surprise. second. He with his two silver medals from the World Cup in Barua. So when he was about to choose, there was not that many options left. So he had to get into a difficult heat here. And Rolf Street, of course, uh, shown many times in knockout sprint that he is a good runner when in this kind of discipline. And this is always a very interesting control in control number two. Yeah. Let's where see, we see who's it, who, who knows what they're doing. Jakob Edson is in the lead of that control, but Tim Robertson has, a, he already knows what he's going to do. Everybody else just going to go that same way. But it looks like it is uh, Martin Regborn in the lead at this point. And you can see then they all go this same way to control number three. No one making a move yet. I wonder if what you know how the mentality changes if you if you look at this quarterfinal, for example, compared to the last quarterfinal, or, or one where there's a more uh, you know, a, a big a bigger, a more obvious favorite. Yeah, I mean, in this, the, the thing that I think is interesting in this heat here is that you have runners uh, like Ralph Street. He has made own decisions earlier in other competitions and won doing mm. it. So I think he will be quite confident on choosing another route choice than the others. But of course, he won't do it if he doesn't feel that he has to do it. Uh, if he feels that he can be faster just by running from the last control to the finish, then he won't do anything here. And for me, you know, there's so many exciting runners we haven't yet mentioned. I think Aston Key, uh, he was the Jaywalk Sprint Champion when it was held in Denmark back in 2019. There's a lot of runners uh, from those Junior World Championships who made it through, had success in this country before. And he was really fast in the sprint relay as well, had the second best time there on his leg. The second leg, and now they're splitting up and we saw two runners. Uh, was it Tim Robertson? It was definitely Ralph Street. And two, so splitting up, I think, four one way. Yeah, it yes. was Tim Robertson. And now they get the chance, but they didn't do it too well there. They should have... They should have crossed yeah, over to, exactly to the to left. number three, and uh, that's going to lose some time. Because now they do a small extra loop yeah. there. So maybe the advantage uh, will this... Oh, what is Tim Robertson doing there? So I mm. think Tim Robertson will be out here. Lose a lot of time. See, maybe if he's pushing really hard, but that actually that shouldn't be faster. Um, if he doesn't lose a lot of time there, then he's just so much faster running. So for me, this is too much of a mistake then for both Street and Robertson. And I think they will so be now let's out see. here, but you never know. Let's see what they will be doing from control six to seven, because then now they have to get active here. See that Edson and Key go to the south using the steps there down. And Robertson, the Rekborn, go to the east. So Ruhola. I think actually that the route choice by the three to the south is quite good. So let's see if they. And then if they go by the water, I think as seconds. well. Yeah, because they will see each other now again. Will they stick to the plan they had before, or will they change? Will they adapt when they see the other runners? See that uh, Rekborn is going to the water, the others go around, so they're splitting up again. This will be very interesting this when they come to Control Seven, and now we won't seen see this them. Before, have we? You know, and we won't seen see them in choice. the picture when they when we see Control Seven. We will only see Key, Etzen, and Street. Okay, we're waiting so then at number seven. Keep an eye to the right as well because the other three runners will come from the here's other direction. Key, here's Street, here is uh, the Dane as oh, well. Oh, and that's and a mistake. They're, they're really close here now. This is going to be super, super tight. Robertson goes so fast, and this is going to be a big sprint out then for the finish. They are so close here. They are close all down to the sprint finish now between these three guys. Key is there, Robertson is there, Street is there as well. I think they're just going to be ahead of Martin Regborn. Uh, Edson is lucky. 
for Dan, and this is going to be super close. I think Street just gets it ahead of Key, ahead of Robertson, and goodness me, that I think was the and most dramatic one yet. All of them, or Robertson was very lucky there that Rekman was running the way, the wrong way around the tree there, because he had a very good position to win this heat. Martin Rekman, when he came first there from the right direction. That was, uh, that was, I think, quite a crazy... Uh, you could really feel how he got nervous when he saw the others coming yeah. and then he was kind of dragged but to the right, to them. Whoa. Goodness me, goodness me. And then I think, and I think from your calculations as well, we moved to the, the possibly the fastest quarterfinal, the one with the most top guys in it, so the one with, with the fewest maybe, but uh, for me one man uh, sticks out here August Molain, he was third in the knockout sprint in Barorsk, uh, he's such a quick runner uh, and, a, and a quality orienteer, but again one of the one of the more inexperienced on the, the Swedish team. And here you can really see the how they pick the heats. I mean, it's not an advantage to be in heat six because that means that the, if you make it to the semi-final, you will be in semi-final three, and then you will have least of uh, time mm. if you make it to the final. So, yeah, if you plan ahead and you feel confident and are one of the favorite, you are more likely to pick uh, quarter-final one or two. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Very. It was ages before anybody picked number six. Um, it was a very different story in the women's, though, when uh, they were all much more spread out. Uh, we've got a, a Spaniard in this heat as well. Great to see Alvaro Casado uh, get through here. There are two Spaniards that qualified for the quarterfinals. Mate Baumholzer as well from Hungary in the mix. In fact, he is... Uh, taking the lead at this point and this is the first route choice and the Spaniard uh, knows I think what he was going to do mm. but it's no, different they didn't know what they were going to no, do no 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 and, <laughs> oh, they oh, and let's see here who takes the lead then it is uh, you see that Jakob Glonek he wasn't very confident in the route either Jakob Glonek was uh, ninth in the World Championship now they're sprint in splitting up here. Baumholzer going to the north all the way around. This will be interesting to see. We had that situation before. And for me, maybe he's someone who, who doesn't back his speed. So maybe he wants to try and uh, get ahead with clever orienteering. And, uh, you know, you've then... From, from this point, Baumholtz has got a long way to, to really take a look at number three, number four, even number five, and try and get ahead. Mm. But August Molain, it looks like he is leading this group around the hedge to the third control. We've got Ricardo Scalet in there as well. Of course, a bronze medal in the World Cup final on home soil at the end of last year. That was in the middle distance race. So Baumholtz, he loses a little bit of time here. We haven't seen him coming around the corner. but a lot more smooth here. It's really hard to, to get a, a sense of, of whether their pace is slower than the others. You know, this, this is a lot more smooth, but maybe it's because they've, you know, they've been adding in some seconds. They've just, just been taking the foot off the gas to be able to, to get this. And mm. uh, now they stop. <laughs> August Malayan goes there. And for me, um, Baumholzer is, is out of it for this one. He's too far off the, this group of five. So from these five, three to go through then, in this last quarterfinal. <laughs> Quite a lot of hesitation here. There are many changes in the lead because of small mistakes they are doing or small hesitations. And you can practice knockout sprint all you like. How much do you need to read the map? How much do you do you not? But every single time you're with a different group of people and, the, and that's what really makes it unpredictable for me is that you're never with the same people twice and that group of people is going to make different decisions and for me that's what makes knockout sprint really exciting mm. and now we are just about to see the last route choice here again the decisive one control six to seven you see that Glonek Molen Breivik Breivik go to the south 
there are still different options even from here you can go around they've gone down yes. the steps i think that looks pretty good and the other skelet and casado going more smooth more like a curve around control six not as s shaped as the others Then they will soon they will see each other. And there's a small advantage for the group that went to the south. It's so hard to say from the GPS if Casado is in the group again, but we will see very soon when they come when they come around the corner at control seven. So let's see here. Who will be the first August one? Malin, yeah, it Breivik. is Malin. Then it's Skelet, Casado, and Glonek. They are much more distinct into this control. They know exactly what they're going to see. And for me, those three then are clear, a couple of meters clear of the rest. And they're really going to push it now to the line. August Molain is the first one, Breivik and Skelet. They are the three, I think, who will qualify here. But Glonek is really fighting hard. Molain looks around to see if he has to do any more. And it is Molain, Skelet and Breivik who make it through then to the semi-final number three. And uh, incredible racing then. A very, very different style of quarter-final mm -hmm. again. Even though there was some hesitation, I think it's well deserved by Molain. He was the most active, maybe Casado as well, but uh, he was very active throughout the course, taking the lead often. And... Uh, well deserved, makes it to the semi-final here. Okay, we go straight on to the women's quarter-finals then, and this one is being held by the favourite for today's race, Tova Alexanderson, of course, 16-time world champion. She's already got one gold medal in this uh, world championships, and she really likes for me to hit the front and be incredibly active in this, and I think the others will probably let her. Mm, it or will be interesting to see how they will behave if Tuve wants to take the lead or if she is more doing the keyboards tactics and staying behind in the beginning. Spread out quite a little bit here. I think they split slightly and we can catch up with them again at the uh, first control. Mm -hmm. So Alexanderson should really take this one, but for me then it's, it's quite tricky to see who's going to be the second uh, and third place athletes in this heat. Tova Alexander, you can see she's really, really looking hard at this route choice through to control number three and everybody else is, is right there, just waiting to see what she does, I think. And she goes back out the same way. Ah, wow, but they all, all doing a mistake. Make a mistake there. <laughs> they are doing exactly the same thing. It's kind of understandable mm -hmm. that they follow Tova Alexander and here it would be a very big risk to leave this group and go on your own when you ha have the big star of the competition in your group in your heat so now we are on the way to control three as you mentioned before it's exactly the same course as the men had mm -hmm. And again, no, no forking, no runner's choice, no nothing like that at this point. They, they wouldn't know in advance whether there was forking or runner's choice. Um, they knew there wasn't ever going to be an athlete's choice. Um, but they didn't know whether it was just going to be a straightforward course or whether there were going to be any loops. One look at the map tells you, easy peasy, uh, it's a straightforward course. But I think because of there's so many um, route choice options, the... That's really what the um, mm. planners thought. And now you can see that it's already splitting up here. There's a big gap behind Tove Alexanderson. Maybe not a big surprise, but she could go a bit slower and save a bit more energy. But maybe her tactics is to decide it early and then slow down towards the end so she doesn't have to go this uh, to use the very but the boost on the last yeah. meters well, here. Well, she knows she can't afford to, you know, actually risk it, take it slow. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, she, she's someone who does make mistakes. So we've got to, she's got to use yeah, what, I mean, her strengths, which is her running speed. And it's understandable that you don't want to risk anything if you can decide it before. 
and then maybe put some extra safety in it as you see Ooh, it here. Yes. That was a, a uh -huh. long hesitation for me there. Yeah, let's see if and everyone the others is following. Will almost, all, de almost definitely follow her. Oh, no, not quite. Wisniewska no. goes the there. other way from the pole. I think she was uh, ah, part of the relay, but now she kind of there. messes up there. Yeah. She needs to, if she goes too far that way, she's going to go into an out of bounds, which will not help. So maybe that's an advantage to uh, the, the, the others Zuzana Kovachova, uh, Anna Isabel Toledo. Maria and Larson, who you are can following. see that Wisniewska lost a lot of time there. You see the out of bounds, so you have to first go over the bridge and then go down again to control three and use the tunnel there. But you see here the gap between Alexanderson, Ulausen, Toledo, no, Navarro, and Kvatsova doing a mistake there. First almost running into this dead end. Yeah, it's her first ever World Championships. She's still a junior, but she was a very impressive fifth in her heat. But maybe just dropping back now allowed uh, the French athlete uh, Anoe to pick up, to catch back up. But maybe we'll start getting... Uh, it looks good for Alausen. It looks good for the... Um, Toledo, Toledo. Navarra. Yeah. And we were quite surprised none of the other kind of top runners pick this heat, even if it's got Alexanderson in. You know, it's still the top three to qualify. And it means that you have that longer time to recover between all of the rounds. And that on a, on a knockout sprint, when you're running 30K in terms of the, the, the sprinting and all the warming up and cooling down and recovery that you have to do, it's uh, Yeah, it, it, it was kind of lot. different aspects in it. Uh, you could feel that some of the runners, they don't really have this routine yet. They don't really know what to do when they pick the start heat. Um, others, you feel that they're not confident enough to be challenged by Tove here. Um, I mean, there are different aspects, but as long as you're in uh, quarterfinal one or two, you will end up in semi-final one. So it's maybe none of the others wanted to be challenged by Tove already in the quarterfinal. Okay, easy peasy stuff for Tove Alexanderson, but who will bet take the second and third places? Here is the Spaniard. And because they've, they've lost the, the sight of Alexanderson now, this is going to be really, really interesting to see who will make it through. Uh, we've got, they may all go through here. Uh, they all go around. So it's Elena Kovacheva or Lawson. It'll be two of these three to make it through. Alexanderson has already crossed the line. Anna is uh, there now. So Tova Alexanderson, easy stuff for her, but I'm more interested in now in second and third place. And it is an absolute sprint out here. It's looking good for the, the Spaniard and for the Slovakian. Kovacheva and Toledo are the ones who go through. So incredible you, stuff. You could really see how they were hesitating towards the second last control. They had a good chance there. Um, going straight to the control, but they were running all around the tree. So they were not. I'm really surprised super because well I'm just looking back at the prepared. map here, uh, here, and I think it's quite. It, it, the detail is quite spaced out. I think it's quite clear to see where the mm, control should be. But it's also a very stressful <laughs> situation <laughs> here. I, I've not been running it in a knockout sprint format. You are correct. Okay, let's move on then to um, the women's quarterfinal number two and um, two. I think big names in this one. It is Simona Abasold who won her heat. Seven walk medals for her, no gold yet. Can she be the one who uh, challenges Tove Alexanderson? She's not had the best winter though, so we will see. Also for me, Teresa Yanashikova from the Czech Republic. She uh, has got a lot of experience and she's got a lot of good um, sprint uh, results as well. Mm, I uh, agree with you. I mean, uh, I expect those two runners to be the most active ones in this heat. And then behind there, it will be a tough fight for this third one. If we just uh, think about that, Janosikova and Abersol have a good chance to get through quite easily. 
and uh, we have yeah, I mean, uh, Victoria Esta Björnstad and um, Miritrani Ödum, they can be fighting for third one, but also the others. So there aren't many spectators out on the courses, I think, today, but uh, some there. And then we go back to being live and we can see Victoria Esta Björnstad has gone the different way to everybody else. But Abasov may be out in the lead. It's, we're going to pick them up on the cameras very soon. Here they are, it's Jana Shikova leading there. Abasol just on her shoulder. We've also got the Dane oh, Miritana Erdem as well. Oh, it was it's good for Victoria Hesabjornstad. There she is, she is in the lead. She was a part of the silver medal winning sprint relay team for Norway in the last World Championships. It's always very nice to see when it's paying off if uh, one of the runners is very active and choosing a known route here. It looks like we've dropped Sofia Sarkozy and Katarina Dallara from this group. So three of these four to go through mm. and nobody has realised uh, yet. A lot of hesitating here up this bridge. Oh, and the others go back. Uh, yeah, I mean, they would not. They don't need to go back. They could have no. continued and just cut over the grass there. But good for Trane Erdem and Abersold. Very good for Trane Erdem and Abersold. It'll be great to see the Dane through, It'll give us the home crowd something to cheer about. Abersold, though, into the lead. And the two of them now, there's a little bit of a gap. Um, Jana Shikova working really, really hard to catch up. And I wonder if Victoria Haystad Bjornstad will pay for the, the amount of effort she was putting into taking that other route choice. I think that she must have really, really gunned it down that road to be able to get ahead of the others. It's a bit surprising for me that so many runners struggle with this leg four or five. I mean, it's, you see, you can, I mean, it's not so obvious to see on the map. I can agree with that, but you have been running three to four. So you've been there, you've checked it, you know that there are different levels and then you, the thing you do is go back to control three, where you come from. Yeah, but that orienteers don't like to do that. <laughs> come on, you, we, we're always discussing how people don't want to yeah, back out of a control. And yeah. especially that you don't want to go back to the one they've already been to. But we're talking about world-class orienteers that are running <laughs> a knockout sprint world championship. It's, well, so it's, it's caught out many that's people. That's not an excuse. It's caught out many people, I think. I really do. Let's have a look then, this route choice. Mm -hmm. Here, not the best route choice there by Abersolt. Would have been better to go all the way around there, around the S shape, which I think Bjornstad is doing. Dallara is also doing. And this bit is like someone's backyard, I think, where they where they've gone. Let's see here the. More or less all together now, at this point, except for Sarkozy. Not is there sure some hesitating in the GPS or what are they doing I there? I don't know what is happening here. Uh, I think it's some GPS struggle, okay, so let's right, see. Let's have a look and see what's going to happen. Who's going to be the first one round this corner? We're looking just above the red car. Abersold. Abersold is there. Mr. Bjarnstad, Miritana And Teresa Janoshikova. So it's that four still. And it's uh, going to be three places to get. So who's going to make it through? Who's the one who's not going to make it through? This will be tight here. here. This is really, really tight. We saw Miritana Erdem uh, lose out on a sprint relay already. And I think she's going to lose out on another one. Uh, she ran the last leg for Denmark in the sprint relay and uh, she's really fighting hard here all of these women fighting so hard but it is going to be Anashikaba through Abasol through and uh, Hesta Beyonce through she is incredibly pleased with that and the four of them really really tight really pushing each other around the way but it was uh, again a quarter final where we saw a lot of mistakes uh, Abasol happy to come through that one mm, and the uh Kind of good to see that uh, Victoria Hasta Bjornsson made it to this semi-final. She, my feeling, she was at least quite active there in the beginning. Was she dared to go on her own way to control three? 
So we go through to uh, quarterfinal number three and uh, another six women, only half of them will make it through. For me, there are probably two favorites in this race. We've got Megan Carter-Davis. Uh, she got a silver in the knockout sprint in Barros. A silver medal in the sprint relay, of course, uh, a couple of days ago. Sabina Hausfit, of course, the other one. Very, very experienced uh, Swiss. Tends to be better in the forest, though. So we will see what happens uh, with that one. And then uh, we've got a young, very young Dane, who was a Jaywalk sprint champion last year in Turkey. It's her first ever world championships. And can she do it for the Danes? But Megan Carter-Davis doing what she is familiar with. She's such an active orienteer and she's hit the front here. And for me, this group is uh, separating a little bit in terms of they're not quite on top of each other. And we pick them up then as they go to the third control. Again, they've all stuck together here. Looks like, well, we'll pick them up on the cameras very, very soon. It'd be interesting to see how they did out of control number two, because I think that's always quite a key one. Mm. And do some go the different Balgeby. ways? No, oh, no, I think it's just slow. Christiansen maybe this. going around the other way there. Maybe. Towards this tunnel. They're only it's only Megan Carter Davis and, and Ursula Fesselhofer. Fesselhofer here. There we have Christiansson and Hauswirt. And the others are behind. Looks like there's really high pace on this one. So we lose Olena Babic and Isia Basse. They're not part of this group of four. Mm, and let's see how they handle the situation here on the top of the bridge. No hesitation at all. Carter Davis goes straight down here. It's maybe not the best one, but she's not lost any seconds in Oi. making the decision. Oh, House Fit losing there. And again, they all go the same way. So it doesn't really matter that it's not the best route because they are going to go the same same way indeed. But you, can, you can see really how Megan Carter Davis just running her speed, doesn't care about the others and the gap. You can see that as long as she's not hesitating, of course, it will just draw the group apart and the uh, gaps will uh, appear so for her that's a very good situation as long as, as she's not hesitating because if she does a mistake here then all her effort was more or less for nothing. Yeah she really uh, kind of took control in the the final of the knockout sprint in Barros and just went the different way she's like well th this way was better and she just you know was surprised to see not anybody else take it so she's got a huge amount of well-deserved confidence in her own orienteering at the moment. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see now again at control six. And now for me, because the pace has been so high, I feel like the others will maybe feel like they have to take a risk in order to be able to get through to the, the top three and get through to the semi-final. Yeah, either that or they won't have the time to check their own yeah. routes and will just <laughs> well, follow. Well, maybe. Maybe. But Carter Davis looks like she's out in the lead at this point. Mm, and this looks very good here. But we can see from the GPS, no hesitation at all. Very good orienteering. And my feeling is that it will be a fight for the second and third here. And that Carter Davis will make it quite easily to this semi-final. We'll see. I mean, she had some problems in the end of the sprint relay as well. Yeah, she's she's actually she often makes a few route choice errors in a in a sprint relay. We kind of saw that in Barros as well. I think we've seen that in a, a few other um, mixed sprint relays as well. But I think really her confidence is is here on this knockout sprint. Mm, and the, my feeling is there that there is a small gap between Christiansen and Hauswirt. Hard to say from the GPS. We'll see it very soon when they come around the corner to Control Seven. And here is Carter Davis. Here she is. Here's here is Megan Carter over. Davis. And here is Christiansen. And will this be the first Dane to make it through to the semi final? It looks looking good for Christiansen, but looking even better for Carter Davis and for Fesselhofer. Uh, Sabina Hausfeld is working really hard to see if she can catch up these three, but it's looking really good for Carter Davis. She looks behind her, she doesn't need to. 
Um, but Sabina Hausford is chasing hard. Is she going to run down the Dane? Is she going to get through? Uh, all the Danes are really cheering on their women. Carter Davis first, Vessel Hopper second. It is the Dane who makes it through. She is the first Dane to make it through to the semi final. I think. I, that's how I called it from my, my view of the, uh, the finish line. It was admittedly slightly off. I think she's got three. Mm -hmm. And uh, very impressive of uh, Ursula Fesselhofer as well. I haven't seen her in very good shape during the last years, but uh, she seems to be back for House, Ursula yeah. Kardam. House is out, so... Uh, that was a very exciting last part. And we uh, move very quickly on then to the next uh, quarterfinal, quarterfinal number four. And some interesting names on this one for me. Ven Lahayu, Andrina Benjaminson particularly are the two favorites. And then it's quite open, I would say, then for the third place mm. on this one. It'll be very interesting to see the runner from the Netherlands, Yves van Donchen. Here she had the uh, is running really good at the Swedish Championships, both in knockout sprint and in sprint. And they are splitting up now. Yeah, for Grace Malloy has gone the other way. You could see uh, Ven Lahaye was uh, like behind the others, and then she decided to go this other way. They've got to get this little route into the first control here. There we go. Will it be advantage Malloy? We will see them shortly through here to the controls just in this circle there. And I think that's good for these two who've gone this other mm, way. Very good. Yeah, very good for those. So, good choice for Grace Malloy and Ben Hoy and they find themselves at the front of the pack, although we know everything can change incredibly quickly, especially as they go in and out of control. I mean, it, it was mostly about the position in the group and for the self-confidence, mm -hmm. no problem for Benjaminsen here to close this gap again. She is very strong physically. Now Grace you can Malloy see that just Malloy, kind of waits for yeah. everybody else to decide and this they, one. I think they, they do the same, the same mistake. mistake. Yeah, they will turn here again. Oh. Whoa! Uh, and we mix them up again. It you means can see nothing. A, a smile there. <laughs> How do you? Okay, it looks like they now we, we catch back up with them on their way to control number three. We'll see them very, ah, very shortly at we three can and see now they see Benjamin and Hario running to the north there. It wasn't as fast as the other way around before in the earlier heat. Here they come, Benjamin, Hario. And, and Malloy Nolkan. is the only one who's gone the other way. Yeah. There Here we go. Is. Pretty similar. Although we don't know where they started from beforehand. Like I thought, Lejnik is off the back. So to, I think, Jana Petrova, her first world championships for the athlete from the Czech Republic. Some hesitating here, here again. Benjamin's in the lead. Let's see how they will tackle next control. So here hesitations. I think Malloy is the most distinct on this one. She knows exactly that she's going to go. Oh, she just climbed a little ah, bit there. And Van Donchen, I think she will run around there. Uh, coming down here again. Wow. Yeah, that okay, wasn't very good either. Very steep in that moment. Okay. And now the route to five is fairly simple from here. And there is five there all together. Three will make it through. And I guess the two favourites, Ha Yu and Benny Minson, off the front there. You can see the little changes of pace as they kind of look up from their maps, I guess. And then really, you know, the, would we expect this pack to split up again? Maybe they've already done it quite a few times in this race, unlike well, other quarterfinals. I guess that Benny Minson is quite confident in her last 100 meters. <laughs> I don't know about Haryu, I don't know about Malloy, I don't know about Van Donchen. But they are splitting up again, Malloy going to the south. What are the others doing? Oh, I think it's really hard to see on this GPS, to be honest. Yeah, maybe they're... I'm not sure. I think we'll only really see once they 
Uh, uh, yeah. Let's agree oh. that we don't see it here, really. <laughs> We're really not, not sure what's <laughs> happening here. Uh, me, they've the all made routes. a mistake here going this way around um, and not go, not turning back yeah. down the steps as, as soon as they cross the steps. I think we just didn't really see how they were running here. Okay, we're just going to have to wait, I think, until we get to control number seven and see who is out in the lead. Malloy, we can say, I think she's out. She went all the way around there, going from a good route to a worse route. So Benjaminson is there, Haryu is there, Ivan Dongen is there. Does anybody come from the right? We will wait and see. These three have got a gap, though, and this they is all down to this quite relaxed here, so it doesn't seem to be any problems. Oh, this is a big gap, so this they are through. This is a big gap. Here is uh, Lednik, I think, there. Uh, Malloy in fourth, but she is 10 seconds off the pace. So Benny Minton, Haryu and Van Dongen, they can uh, cruise into the finish. Yves Van Dongen very, very happy with that one. Benny Minton through comfortably, then Haryu and Van Dongen into the semi-final as well. Knocked out Jana Petrova, Grace Malloy and Agata Olednik. And we really saw, for me, that, that route six to seven key and I know I guess they would split up because that's the the characteristics of that particular group they just happen to have split up a bit more okay two more quarterfinals to go and this is quite an interesting one we have Elena Ruiz, Sarah Hagström, Cecile Calandry she was quite good the, uh, in the sprint relay and also in the qualification and then we have Marie Cataini qualified as 12th this morning just, just qualified. She is uh, best in middle distance. I'm not sure how her form is. She's had injuries for her f in her feet for a couple of years and they split up. Or, or no, they don't split up already. <laughs> I thought they might have done. So this group of six. Sarah Hagstrom taking the lead at this point. Eleanor Ross just sitting at the back. I wonder if she will do a bit of a Martin Hoopman kind of tactics, just sitting there, ready to pounce, really checking her map for when she needs to do that. This was actually one of the surprises for me this morning that she chose to be in quarterfinal five because she she came second in her heat and she had the chance to more or less freely choose, but she I think she did, she wanted to avoid the confrontation with one of the very big names here, but then, I mean, in the end, she got <laughs> in the same heat as Sarah Hagström and Cecile Gallantry and Marie Cataini, maybe not the heat she would have picked from the beginning then. And she goes into the lead at that point. We'll see what happens to them at number oh, no. two. And now they go the other way. Yeah, it's the first time we see mm. them run there. So this is actually the route that is the shortest regarding distance. But it doesn't matter because all of them are <laughs> all running of them the same, the same way. Exactly, exactly. And we saw that car in the way just there. But actually, the, the organizers have, have made a lot of these parking spots uh, so that you can't park in them during this race, so yeah, that the runners get a bit of a clearer run through some of these car parks, which is incredible planning. As a pre-runner, you got really happy when you could see when you were running over a parking uh, place and you could see that all the parking lots in on the best route, yeah. they were blocked, so you could so kind of an empty. alley yeah. to run on. Okay, so Hagstrom looking good then at the front of this, and at this point they're all very, very close together. And they're and doing now a, they mistake do a mistake here. But all of them, so it doesn't matter. They're going to go and hit this tape here, and they can't go that way. <laughs> or they're going to go but over the top. They, they go down there. It's, I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> this really? Do I have to go down there? Yes, you do. Yeah. You've done that? You, no, you don't. If you <laughs> choose right from the beginning. That's true. And uh, well, that's not a good choice, Pesada Hagstrom there. So now suddenly it's. Uh, Katarina Tsema from the Ukraine in the lead. 
But it's the same option that we have seen uh, Tim Robertson taking, and uh, he didn't lose too much time there, so maybe you see here. Bigger time loss for Hagström. Where is she? There, there she, she is. is. <laughs> yeah. Made it quite much faster there. So, sorry, yeah, Sarah Hagstrom really has to push now to try and catch up with that group and make it there for number six. Will she again choose a different route to number seven? For me, it looks like Emma Waddington was slightly off the back of that pack, the Canadian runner. Mm, you can see that they are going the same way, six of them. And now we see that the Ruos is running the S shape. Also, Hagström and Galandry. See Emma. Marie Cataney, maybe the only one not to. Yeah, I think she yeah. will lose time. Hard to see. Yeah, I guess she will lose time on that. Some really sharp turns around some of these buildings. This is really central part of Pedrisia, this old uh, military town with these ramparts, these big hills that are very defensive. My feeling is that they are still quite together, so it will be a fight for this third position into the semi final. Seems that Rose and Hagstrom may be a few meters ahead. Let's see here. Let's here is Elena Rose, here is Sarah Hagstrom. Yeah, or a couple Katarina of meters ahead. on the third. And Calandry Cecilia Calandry, and they are a bit more distinct into this control. Calandry wasn't as much. Elena Ross, though, goes through first. And those two look to be well ahead of the others. So let's see as they come round uh, into the run-in here. The last control. And it's looking really good for Ross. So Hagstrom's worked really hard, I think, to catch up that time that she lost coming out of control uh, number four. And the two of them will qualify easily. Calandri almost looks to be like running down the Ukrainian. But no, Katerina uh, Zema manages to make it through then. Mm. Very good run by Katerina Zema taking a semi-final for the Ukraine here. Marika Taney missed out, I think, the route choice there. And uh, Emma Waddington also threw into sixth place. Bit of a surprise that uh, Calandri lost it against uh, Tsema. Yeah, she had a better result in the heats. So, um, yeah, we will see. Anyway, the last quarter final then. And um, we've got a couple of uh, couple of good names. In fact, this is quite, quite a good field, I think, uh, on this one. <laughs> Looking at their heat results, this looks like it was the toughest quarter final. And for this to be the sixth one, it was very surprising to see people choose this one. Charlotte Ward, Lena Strand, those choosing this last one. But they all start out very closely matched. Charlotte Ward had a really impressive um, uh, heat, really quick time for her there, and her speed and, uh, is really on point at the moment. And of course, they split up. So Nicolina Fuber Klusner, Charlotte Ward, and uh, Sandra Grosberger, those three going the other way. Lena Strand, uh, Alexandra Hornick and Jana Stadikova going the other way. This looked to be the better way when we saw Grace Malloy take that one. Should we call it the British route? Uh, very few people have chosen this one, but it's looking good, I think, for this group there. And mm. they will be ahead of the others at this point and just giving them a small advantage. OK, we catch up with them then on their way to control number three. All together at this point, and we'll catch them on the cameras for this interesting deceptively tricky couple of controls on the ramparts yes yeah, we have seen especially control four to five is quite interesting <laughs> yes very very interesting three to four not so much but all of the others yeah really tricky so charlotte ward is there i think that is uh, alexandra hornick alongside her as well leading this group Sandra Grosberia and Lina Stamp. So now it will be interesting how well prepared are they. So Grossberger is not prepared. You could see. 
well prepared are they up here on the top? Will it just continue straight ahead? Will they go back again? Let's see some intense map reading here. For me, Jana Stelikova just off the back there. She doesn't really seem to have the pace of the others. And uh, Alexandra Hornick, though, is in control at this mm -hmm. point. And she goes straight down. That looks to be the best route. Yeah. Charlotte Ward just looking over to her, her shoulder to the left. And now a small little gap then. It was actually one of the smoothest uh, exit from the control we have seen <laughs> throughout the whole quarterfinals. Yeah, I think credit goes to Alexandra Hornick on that one. Yeah, and you can really see strong. that there's a small gap here. But it's um, also a gap between three and four, so I don't think they will mind too much there. And we've got to remember Lena Strand, her acceleration, her speed on the last couple of minutes of the course on the, on the sprint relay, that just how she was able to pull ahead of Abersold was really, really impressive. And I think these three at the front can almost afford to be a little bit conservative now because they've got a little bit of a gap, but you don't really want to spend too much of your orienteering looking behind you, to be honest. You want to be uh, looking ahead, being really active in the orienteering. And again, it's very hard to say where they are running. You can see that it seems as if they head to the south at least. Will they run the S shape? As we think is the best option. S shapes, are s we, you know, the orienteers don't like to take them. Often they are longer, but I think this one is, is a bit deceptive. You know, it's not, it's, uh, it's yeah, You can see that, that they're splitting up there. It's only... Ward and Strand running this S shape, so I think they're quite safe through to the semi final here. And the it others will be a fight for the third position. And the others really are having to take a risk in order to get ahead from these two really strong runners. They've proved it in the results, and that means a lot, you know. the Everyone will kind of have had a couple of hours to think who they're in their quarterfinal with. They will know the form of some of the other athletes and think about how they want to tactically play this. Uh, and they know that Ward uh, and Strand are really strong here. So I think this group might go via the water, which does actually look to be not too bad. But for me, they're a little bit back on the others. OK, let's watch then and wait for the leaders to come through to this control number seven. Here's Lena Strand. She is the first one around. Charlotte Ward is in second place, and it's looking good for those two, but we, I think we'll see some coming from the right as well. So Strand through. Ward is through, and those two distinctive then and really good route choice on that seventh control. Oh, here is uh, Hornick. Alexandra Hornick is through there as well, and uh, Nikolina Fuma into fourth place. So easy stuff for Lena Strand. Easy work then for Charlotte Ward as well, and Alexandra Hornick will be in the third place. So Lena Strand qualifies, Charlotte Ward qualifies, so too does Alexandra Hornick of Poland. And that is the quarterfinals done. Goodness me. <laughs> 12 intense, incredibly fast races. And that was only the quarterfinals. Wait till the semifinals and the finals to come. Uh, we do encourage you to, to stick around. You will have to uh, pay to hear our commentary for the, on the IOF live stream, but we would love to have you for the next uh, couple of hours as we talk you through the semifinals and the finals as well. A uh, recap of the quarterfinal qualifications for the men. Did we really have many surprises here? Not really. I mean, we have, men we have had very big names through... We didn't see this. Uh, I mean, we have seen the very, very tight uh, uh, one with Martin Riekman, Tim Robertson, Aston Key. Maybe that Martin Riekman is out is kind of a surprise. But I mean, this heat was so brutal to be in, and you can see they were quicker. So much. They were six eleven compared to the six twenty seven and six twenty eight. The other side of them, it was fast. Yeah, and it was. I mean, it's hard for Martin Riekman. He really was in the lead at this just before the second last control and then he chose to go around the tree there and he lost it so yeah Look, and then in the women's i guess again no real surprises maybe it's been a house not making it but you know she's she is better in the forest as well we look at quarterfinal three was much quicker than those other two on this as well won by uh, mick carter davis 
Uh, but any any other surprises in the women's as we look through here? No, it, there were not uh, many big surprises. For me, the surprising thing was more the style they were orienteering that you could see at Control 4 that they're not really prepared for what's coming. And also that, for me, it's always surprising. I mean, when you do your analysis before the run, you see that uh, which kind of parts will be the different difficulties and you can see that those different levels will be at one of the difficulties. All right, we will take a break now for about 15 minutes. Please do uh, log on to watch our semi-final and final production live here from Fredericia for the semi-finals and the finals. It's going to be a fantastic competition. We will see you very soon.